Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Review. What a ride this masterpiece was. Best game so far in 2019 for sure, so let's go straight to the sections. Story. As in all Souls-like games, Sekiro also comes with mysterious story, but the clearest presentation of the story so far. At least you know who you are and what is your purpose this time. You're a shinobi who lost his memory that lives under a code to obey his master shinobi and protect the Divine Air. Of course, Divine Air gets captured because of his dragon blood at the very start of the game and your job is to save him. That's the story in short, but it's way more complicated than this. There are 1000 different things that still need to be discovered and clarified in Sekiro's story. Much of those loose ends are probably left for the DLC or maybe even Sekiro 2. We'll see. Most of the story is inscripted in items that you'll find along the way, and Sekiro speaks, by the way, a main character that speaks in From Software games. Imagine that, people. There are four different endings, one bad ending, two good endings, and one true ending for the game. So, 9 out of 10 for story, because it's adoring and confusing at the same time. Also a bit sad. Next section, game bugs. No glitches, few bugs here and there, but nothing game-breaking. Uh, there were bugs like enemies acting weird, falling off cliffs and similar stuff. Hitboxes were on point in 90% of time, considering it's a new game that's a success from my point of view. Optimization is perfect, the game runs at smooth 60 frames without stutterings and legs in 99% of time. That 1% goes to 10 enemies at the same time when you're surrounded by fire and smoke everywhere around you. Loading times are super fast on SSD and that's a huge plus. 10 out of 10 for this section. Game time as the next section. Well, it took me around 40 hours to finish the game on my first blind playthrough. Have in mind that I've spent a lot of time talking while streaming the game, plus I try to explore every corner of the world there is, so this game is probably around 30 hours long. After seeing all buses and areas, I can say that this is one huge game and 40 hours is not enough. You need another playthrough, which means at least 20 more hours for New Game Plus. Replay value is there, not huge replay value like in Dark Souls, but it's still there. Sekiro is the best on your very first playthrough though, and that's a bloody fact. 9 out of 10 for game time. Game difficulty for the next section. This is not a game for casual players. It's hard, it's challenging, it's great, but it's still easier than Dark Souls 1, for example. Instead of Souls games, where you spam attack to win, here you will spam block to win. Instead of being careful and planning, in Sekiro you need to be aggressive and reckless. The moment you realize that, the game will become easier. But have in mind, there is always an option to raise the difficulty even more by cursing yourself with a bell in Senpu Temple. 10 out of 10 for difficulty, I enjoy the game a lot. This section deserves nothing else but a 10. Maps and graphics, as the next section. Sekiro is a beautiful game. Astounding amount of detail from mountains, caves, to ancient temples and Japanese old architecture. Variety in maps is huge also. All colors are covered, in other words. Graphics are fine. For PC, they're nothing special. Could have been much better, to be honest. But until the next-gen consoles are released, we will need to suffer with graphic downgrades in games. Even with all of that said and done, I still believe that the game is a joy for your eyes. 9 out of 10 for this section. Next section, and the most important section, is gameplay. What do you do in this game? You'll sneak, kill from stealth, jump, glide, slide, shimmy, run across rooftops, swim, dive, swing, run like flash, your shinobi is fucking fast by the way. Dodge, block, use 50 different special attacks and combos while you're fighting, explore, discover, solve NPCs, quests, and fight bosses. A lot of bosses. Everything is top-notch. Every mechanic in the game works flawlessly well. I don't know what's better. Adventure parts, stealth parts, action parts, boss parts, discovery parts, or lore-based parts. 
One quick mention is on health and posture. There is no stamina in Sekiro, so you can swing your sword non-stop, but there is posture. Same rules apply for your enemies. When you hit, you add posture damage to your enemies. Same applies, and you parry with success. Once you break through their posture, you can execute them in beautiful ways. I could speak about this section for days, how good it is, but there is no need to say anything else. 10 out of 10 pure masterpiece for this section. Next section is NPCs and enemies. A lot of NPCs with their own personal stories and quests. Most of them are interesting with a lot of what the fuck moments. Enemies are great too, very good AI, one of the best in this genre, if not the best. From human enemies, to samurai generals and ninjas, to undead monsters, and even freaking monkeys. Monkeys with guns, farting monkeys, crazy ninja monkeys, even three main bosses are monkeys, goddammit. Someone loves monkeys in From Software. Jokes aside, monkeys are the best part in the game, believe it or not. I'm just kidding, I don't know what's better, regular enemies or 40 freaking different bosses, 40. That's a fucking lot of bosses, and that's a lot of bosses to kill, and they're all unique, and they're all cool, in AI and in their design. 10 out of 10 for NPCs and enemies. Next section is leveling and itemization, the longest section. Sekiro feels like dumbed-down version of Souls games. You get one sword at the beginning of the game, and you'll remain with it till the very end. Prosthetics are there, your cool left arm, thank god for that comedian Genichiro, but I never found use for it. You easily finish the entire game with regular, regular blocks and attacks. Yeah, prosthetic skills are cool and some of them will make your life easier, but what's the point if your block and petty is the only way to survive bosses? Bosses don't care about your tricks. Their posture and health bars are way too huge for that, and you'll spend your emblems without even scratching them. You need emblems to use prosthetic skills, by the way. Prosthetics are good for mobs, nothing else. I'm not sure about New Game Plus. Maybe I'll find some use of prosthetics on New Game Plus, but for the first playthrough, they were not needed. Pure overkill and cool cosmetics to Sekiro only. It's what sells the game. It's what sold the game. Prosthetic, or better to say, his arm. Now, special attacks from different schools are useful, and those can save your life and make the game much easier, especially passive skills. A latent skills in the game, like raise your maximum posture bar, recover health on dead blows, and so on. When you kill enemies, you gain XP and loot. Loot comes in items and in gold. You spend your XP on active and passive skills, and your gold on buying gold purses. Just kidding, you can buy a lot of cool items with gold, mostly consumables that will make your life in battles easier. When you find crafting ma materials, then you say whatever and continue on. Why? Uh, very simple. When you find, for example, in Souls games, Titanite Shards, you feel like you have a good upgrade for your sword or for your armor. And here it's really whatever. Because I already said, prosthetics are not... Yeah, they're fun, but they're not that useful. And then it's whatever when you find crafting materials to upgrade your prosthetic tool. It's a different feeling than from Souls games. Now, one last thing. Every mini boss will give you prayer beads or gourd seeds. And every major boss will give memory. With four prayer beads, you'll assemble a necklace and raise your maximum vitality and posture. With gourd seeds, you'll raise your healing flasks. And with memories from the main bosses, you'll raise your damage output. Leveling and itemization will get 8 out of 10. Last section is music and sound. Lovely music, great sound effects, and a very good voice acting. Everything is voice acted, by the way, even the main character. I won't remember tunes from Sekiro, though, in the years to come. I'll always remember main hub teams from Dark Souls 1 and 2, for example. But Sekiro, I'll quit, quickly, quickly forget about music. 7 out of 10 for this section. Conclusion. We got... 
82 points in nine sections and that would be a 9.6 out of 10 excuse me 9.1 out of 10 for Sekiro Shadows Die twice thrice from half of the game by the way uh, what can I say Sekiro is not souls it's faster smoother maybe even a bit easier but for sure it's a serious game of the year contender for 2019 from software made a user-friendly souls-like game and it's a complete success.